So a couple months ago, I took the time out of my week to compile a list of my 10 best weapons in Battlefield 1. A video that performed reasonably well. Oh my goodness! As such, I figured it was about time I came up with a spiritual successor to that video, and after hours of brainstorming, I landed here, at the one logical conclusion my brain could compile. You made a best in game video. Now go make a worst in game video. So that's what I did. I compiled what I believe to be the 10 worst weapons in Battlefield 1 in 2022, based on my own opinion and a little data sourced from sim.gg. Let's get right into it. Alrighty, kicking off our list with the much desired number 10 spot, we've got the Selbstlader 1906 Factory. Designed by George Luger and patented in England in 1906, the Luger Selbstlader Model 06 was a German semi-automatic rifle heavily based upon Luger's iconic pistol design. The rifle's self-loader featured a near identical toggle lock firing mechanism to that of the Luger pistol, albeit scaled up for the use of the full-sized 7.92 by 57mm round. The weapon did see some improvements over its pistol forefather, particularly to improve its reliability in muddy conditions. However, the weapon ultimately failed to enter mass production, with only a few prototypes being manufactured. As the rank 10 reward for the medic class, the Selbstlader 1906 Factory has received much scorn from the player base over the years, mostly due to the weapon's atrocious 5 round magazine capacity and Luger style loader that partially obscures the weapon's vision after each shot. Whilst the weapon does remain a consistent 3 shot kill regardless of range, the need to reload after each kill does limit the weapon's overall versatility, particularly within the close to mid-range conditions the factory variant is designed to perform within. However, despite these shortcomings, the weapon is capable of competing in single enemy engagements provided the rifle is wielded by an individual with tight enough aim. As such, the Selbstlader 1906 will sit as the 10th worst weapon in Battlefield 1. Galloping into the number 9 position on this list, we've got the Kakano M91 Carbine. Whilst originally designed for cavalry, the Kakano M91 Cavalry Carbine was introduced in 1891 as a rifle chambered specifically for the rimless 6.5x52mm Kakano cartridge. Developed by the Chief Technician Salvatore Kakano at the Turin Army Arsenal, the bolt-action, magazine-fed, repeating military carbine successfully replaced the previous Vitarelli Vitali rifles and carbines, thus entering mass production from 1892 to 1945. The M91 would then see use in both rifle, or fusile, and short-barreled carbine, Moschetto, form by most Italian troops during the First World War. Whilst DICE remained faithful to the rifle's naming in Battlefield 1, the Kakano M91 carbine is actually a trench variant, making it one of only two trench rifles available to the scout class, alongside the Russian 1895. Whilst the Kakano's performance as a bolt-action rifle is poor at best, it performs much like a downgraded Gewehr M95 with a 700 meters per second bullet velocity, 85 damage per bullet from 0 to 19 meters, and one-shot headshot capacity up to 110 meters. However, as this gun was designed as a trench variant, its true comparison should remain the 1895 trench, a weapon which it too falls dangerously short of simply due to the fact that its 73 rounds per minute fire rate is 51 rounds per minute lower than that of the Russian. As such, its ability to engage within its designed optimal range is severely hampered, particularly when engaging multiple targets. Despite all this though, the Kakano is a guilty pleasure of mine, so it shall sit here at the number 9 spot. Since number 8 is great, and this selection is going to get me a lot of hate, let me introduce you to my mate, the M1917 Patrol Carbine. 
Based upon the popular and powerful C96 pistol, the M1917 trench carbine was initially submitted for evaluation in 1917. The weapon featured a fixed stock and foregrip similar to early carbines, but with one key difference, its double stack, double feed, 40 round detachable magazine. However, the weapon still fired semi-automatically, not meeting the specifications brought forward by the German Commission. This, alongside concerns regarding the costs involved with the manufacture of the weapon, resulted in only a small number of M1917 trench carbines being constructed. Furthermore, following World War I, most of these constructed carbines were destroyed due to violating the terms of the Treaty of Versailles. While the M1917 trench carbine is one of my personal favourite weapons in Battlefield 1, the patrol variant introduced in the Weapons Crate update on May 7th 2018 violates the design philosophy of the initial trench variant. Designed for mid-close range combat, the weapon's 34.73 damage per bullet from 0 to 11 meters, partnered with its 40 round magazine and ridiculously tight hipfire accuracy, made for a killing machine in able hands. However, the patrol variant introduces a scope, which in turn greatly increases the hipfire cone, resulting in a weapon with greatly reduced close range effectiveness. The patrol variant almost feels like DICE's attempt to introduce a self-loading rifle to the assault class just without the relevant range to be effective. As such, the M1917 patrol carbine, to me, feels like it suffers from an identity crisis. A weapon designed for mid-close combat, forced to be strictly a mid-range weapon. As such, the carbine shall fall here, at number 8. Al numero 7. We'll be moving to the country whose greatest accomplishment since the Roman Empire is running away from all major conflicts with the Veterelli Vitali M1870-87 Infantry. The M1870 Italian Veterelli is a simplified modification of the Swiss M1869 Veterelli rifle that was utilised by the Italian army from 1870 until roughly 1941. While early iterations chambered with the 10.35 by 47mm black powder centerfire cartridge were single fire weapons, the M1870-87 rifle was updated to feature a 4 round box magazine loaded with a steel and wood charger clip. Although the rifle was displaced from frontline service by the new Kakano rifle in 1891, it would still see use by rear line units while being converted to fire the 65 by 52mm Kakano cartridge within 6 round magazines. In terms of in-game application, the Veterelli Vitali M1870-87 Infantry draws many similarities to the Martini Henry Infantry. Both weapons share an extremely low muzzle velocity speed of 440 meters per second due to the outdated nature of the black powder rounds. Additionally, the weapons feature similar sweet spot distances, with the Veterelli Vitale being capable of a one-shot kill to the upper body between 20 to 50 meters. However, Whilst the Martini Henry is able to remain competitive as an aggressive sniper due to its peak damage of 112 per round, the Veterelli Vitali peaks at only 100 damage per round, thereby ensuring any shot to the arms, legs, hands or feet will not result in a kill. This is incredibly annoying when using the Veterelli Vitali, as within its ideal range, enemy infantry often return fire thereby moving their limbs in the way of the rounds and preventing kills. Furthermore, due to the discouragingly low muzzle velocity, utilizing the rifle more passively remains extremely difficult due to the amount of lead that must be placed on each shot. Personally, I believe the infantry is worse than the carbine due to the intrinsic benefits offered with the carbine suiting the rifle's ideal conditions greater but the Veterelli Vitali M1870-87 Infantry is still going to remain here at number 7. Moving on, let's get the sad selection out of the way. At number 6, I've got the MP18 Experimental. Designed by Hugo Schmeisser and manufactured by Theodore Bergman, the MP18 is one of the most iconic weapons of the early 20th century. As one of the first practical submachine guns, the weapon was adopted by the German army in 1918. 
However, production soon ceased following the end of the First World War. Despite this, the MP-18's highly influential design would serve as the basis for many future SMGs, including its direct disciple, the MP-28 in 1928. Whilst the MP-18 remains a fan favourite amongst many within the Battlefield fanbase, the MP-18 Experimental exists as sort of the disappointment of the MP-18 family. Whilst the weapon retains the same bullet velocity, maximum fire rate, damage per bullet range, and range metrics as its trench and optical brothers, the weapon falls short in several other aspects. The most notable of these include the limitations imposed by the three round burst, decreased magazine size from 32 rounds to 30 rounds, and decreased reserve ammunition from 96 rounds to 90 rounds. Furthermore, despite having fewer rounds in a single magazine, the weapon also features a slower empty reload animation of 3.3 seconds compared to the 2.96 second animation with both the trench and optical variants. Whilst the experimental variant does try to offer theoretical advantages in the form of decreased recoil deviation and faster spread recovery, in practice, the weapon falls so far short of its counterparts, it is simply the worst option in all engagement types. As such, with a heavy heart, I must place the disappointment of the family, the MP-18 Experimental, at number 6 on this list. <sighs> okay, this choice is almost definitely going to get me filled with more pins than are available in the Lament configuration, but since number 5 no longer wants me alive, I'm going to take a shit on the M1909 Benema C Optical. Manufactured for the use of distinct 30 round strip magazines in addition to more common bolts, the Hotchkiss MLE 1909 machine gun was a French designed light machine gun of the early 20th century. The weapon would also be manufactured in the USA under the name Bernay Massy M 1909, where the weapon would be chambered in 30 by 06 Springfield, as well as Britain, who would christen the LMG as the Hotchkiss Mark I. Besides the unique feeding mechanism, the weapon's charging handle at the rear of the receiver distinctively acted as the fire selector, with the direction determining the fire mode. When pointing downwards, the gun was on safe. When pointing right, the gun was on semi-auto. And when pointing upwards, the gun was on full auto. Now while all this sounds super cool, once you get in game, you'll soon come to realise that this gun is super mid. The main draw of the weapon is its best in class 2.6 second tactical reload and 3.9 second empty reload. But that's really it. Like all the other LMGs, the Benay Massey has terrible opening shot accuracy, horrible hip fire, and a slow rate of fire, making it almost unusable at close range. And while it's minimal spread, low damage fall off, 26.5 from 0 to 11 meters to 23 from 35 plus meters, and high bullet velocity of 820 meters per second make the Bene Massey a theoretically enticing option from mid to long range. By the time the weapon starts firing and gets accurate, your 30 round magazine is completely empty, and you're going to have to utilize that awesome reload speed. The weapon just sucks. And y'all are lucky I even left it at number 5. Heading back to the Assault class once more, at number 4 I present the 12G Automatic Backboard. Designed by John Browning in 1898, the Browning Auto 5 is an American 12, 16 or 20 gauge semi-automatic shotgun that was the first successful mass-produced semi-automatic shotgun. Utilizing a four round tubular magazine feed system alongside an additional fifth round in the chamber, it remains widely used by law enforcement, military and civilian groups to this day. Whilst the shotgun's success in the real world cannot be questioned, the in-game implementation of the shotgun, particularly in the form of the 12G automatic backboard, causes me to query the sanity of the dice balance team. Whilst the weapon's 257 rounds per minute fire rate remains the fastest among shotguns, the weapon's maximum of 7.7 .7 damage per pellet means that even if all 12 pellets land from point-blank range, 
The shotgun can only output 92.4 damage per trigger pull. That's 7.6 short of a kill. As such, the 12G shall always be at least a two shot kill. That's not all though. The backboard is even more of a special case as the variant cuts the weapon's damage fall off down two whole meters for, get this, reduced recoil. Dice, what the fuck was the thought process here? Who wants reduced recoil and less range on a shotgun? The 12G automatic backboard sucks, and it's the fourth worst weapon in the game. Kicking off the worst three weapons in Battlefield 1, I've got the weapon that had me wanting to pull the cowardly and leave behind everyone who loves and cares for me, the RSC SMG Optical. The Shoshat Ribe Rolls 1918 is a weapon based on the semi-automatic RSC 1917 rifle mechanism. Originally presented as a pistolet mitrailleur or machine pistol in 1918, the weapon was proposed as a firing port weapon for French tank crews. Whilst the weapon was deemed as satisfactory following several tests, it would eventually be deemed too powerful for its intended self-protection use. Now the RSC SMG's terrorism was introduced to Battlefield 1 with the Apocalypse DLC and has since terrorised all who have dared to attempt higher level gameplay with the weapon. Firing its large 8x50mm Labelle rounds at 440 rounds per minute, the weapon offsets its slower fire rate by dealing a maximum of 38 damage per bullet from 0 to 10 meters. Whilst this trade-off doesn't sound too horrid, the real fun starts with the magazine capacity. With a maximum capacity of 8 rounds, plus 1 in the chamber, the RSC SMG has enough bullets to theoretically kill 2.5 enemies per magazine. However, due to the size of the rounds fired, the SMG's recoil pattern could be best described as... Oh, I don't know... FUCKING AWFUL. The gun kicks like a mule who sniffed too much cocaine before a night out with the boys in Melbourne, making it incredibly difficult to hit your shots consecutively. But to make matters even worse, the gun's reload speed is stupidly slow, with a 3.7 tactical reload and 3.9 second empty reload. As such, the weapon struggles to A. Kill a single enemy B. Remain on target C. Have enough rounds to deal with more than a single enemy D. Reload within the current century As such, I'll say a big fuck you to the RSC SMG, and its optical variant particularly. I just really hate optical sights, and leave the RSC SMG optical as the third worst weapon in Battlefield 1. Moving on to the least desirable spot on this list, as who the hell wants to be known as first loser, at number 2 we've got the Piper M1893. The Piper Revolving Carbine was the successor of the Colt 1855 Revolving Rifle, leveraging a wooden barrel shroud to provide the weapon with a sleeker profile. Adopting the gas seal system from the Nagant Revolver, the Belgian rifles were supplied to the Mexican government for use by the rural police towards the end of the 19th century. Whilst early prototypes were designed with the 7.65mm Mauser cartridge in mind, production copies would end up using the 8mm Piper Carbine cartridge instead. Now, with the formalities out of the way, as a relative of the Nagant revolver, the Piper M1893 performs very similarly within the world of Battlefield 1, firing at a maximum fire rate of 224 rounds per minute, with a 9 round revolving magazine, the weapon inflicts 40 damage per bullet and is capable of a 3 shot kill just past 13 meters. This revolving magazine can only be reloaded in entirety, an animation that takes a total of 4 seconds to complete. Additionally, each round is expelled from the weapon at 440 meters per second. Now, when comparing these statistics to a revolver, one may think that the Piper is a rather competent secondary weapon, which is exactly where the problem lies. The Piper M1893 is a primary weapon, and as such, is a complete piece of f <laughs> Using the Piper voluntarily makes me feel like a barnyard animal at a butcher shop a lamb bred for slaughter. The weapon lacks the fire rate to compete with any competent enemy in a 1v1 engagement, fails to generate the muzzle velocity to compete at mid-range, 
and doesn't even begin to test the long range waters. There is a reason this weapon was never used even when limited to the tanker pilot pool. However, that three shot kill, that possibility, leaves it with a single bright spot. One reason to rank it higher than number one. As such, the Piper M1893 is my pick for the second worst weapon in Battlefield 1. Finally, after a long wait, we are here. The creme de la crop of shitty weapons. The apex predator of wanting to kill yourself. The Battlefield 1 equivalent of humans themselves. At number one, the worst weapon in Battlefield 1 is actually more than one weapon. May I present to you the pistol carbines. Carbines are designated as long arms similar to but shorter than rifles or muskets. Due to this smaller size and lighter weight, carbines are generally desirable for higher mobility units who value handling over factors like muzzle velocity. Pistol caliber carbines, or PCCs however, are much more unusual and unique than the standard carbine. First appearing soon after metallic cartridges became more common, PCCs were developed more as companions to revolvers, firing the same ammunition at a higher velocity and with higher accuracy than a regular revolver. As such, they would be highly popular amongst lawmen in the 19th century. As time went on, PCCs would be further developed in attempts to convert 20th century pistols into weapons capable of fully automatic fire at high fire rates, similar to early SMGs. Most PCCs that would enter production, however, would retain their semi-automatic functionality and would be distributed to artillery and tanker units as personal defense weapons. Now, in terms of in-game functionality, how do I put this? Using the pistol carbines, Feels like being diagnosed with lung cancer, while suffering from cystic fibrosis, being given a day to live, getting shot in the chest on your last day, only to wake up in the hospital two days later, completely cured, just without any testicles. In essence, it's the worst experience imaginable, until you finally accomplish something, only for you to feel emasculated upon realising how long it bloody took. The weapon class suffers from terrible bullet velocity, Fire rates that peak at 360 rounds per minute with the MLE 1903 extended, and a four shot kill at close range with the exception of the M1911 extended. Damage drops off severely due to the lower caliber ammunition, making engagements at medium to long range a gimmick, and on top of all of that, many of these weapons get outmatched by the best secondary weapons that everyone runs. Overall, the pistol carbines can't compete at any range with any weapon class and are simply the biggest gimmicky, rage-inducing, disappointing, atrocious excuse for a weapon in the entirety of Battlefield 1. Thanks for watching guys, since you've already made it this far, why not give the video a like and comment down below which weapon you think is the worst in the game. If you are new, make sure to hit that subscribe button and enable post notifications as I'm uploading weekly Battlefield content. February is almost over, so uploads are going to slow down soon, but I'll make sure to keep the content rolling as frequently as I can. Anyways guys, I'll see you all in the next one. Peace out.